finished him up laugh while I was there. <laughs> but I just kept thinking, shit, I got nothing for this. <laughs> How do you come back with this? I'd already sat there and listened to an hour and a half of his political views that would have had Ollie spinning on top of his head. I mean, how a Christian can be so freaking liberal just really kind of blew me away. Well, not only that, it's it's assuming, it's basically calling Jesus Christ the narcissist, which would mean he, he worshipped himself. If he's the first Christian, that means he's worshipping himself. No, like, no, no, no. You're probably the worst Christian if you... But that gives you the insight of your religious narcissist. But they had, you know, Mike's funeral was obviously... We hadn't converted. Um, so, but the rabbi did hold the service and he sang some psalms and, you know, it was obviously... There were a lot of Jews there. The men came in wearing their yarmulkes and, you know, his family didn't know what to make of it. And I didn't care because I now consider myself one of the group of what they call unfuckwithables. And I'm kind of proud of that. But um, there's still stuff going on. You know, it, it's like it just, he's gone, but it never ends. I got word from a, somebody the other day, one of our cousins, that's, uh, oh God, her and my brother are so far at each other's assholes, it's not even funny. But she said that it wasn't right that Peggy could draw on Social Security, that she should have been working all those years. And, you know, I thought about my back problems and the injury and how I basically pushed myself into ruptured discs trying to please my mother and prove that I wasn't lazy. And, um, you know, Mike worked 40 years paying into that part of Social Security that if there are any widows out there or anybody that gets in this situation, I didn't know about this. When you turn 60, there's this thing called widow's pension. And it, that's important. People need to know that. I mean, I had never heard of it. And a friend of mine who'd been widowed took me into the office, and sure enough, the money was there. But... Um, you know, when you told me before that I had back problems that they had minimized for years, I started to cry because I just, I didn't think anybody understood. I didn't think anybody would believe that a back problem could be this bad. I mean, I can't hardly stand up longer than 10 or 15 minutes. And I have a handicap placard for my car and I won't use it unless there just is no other place to park. And it, I keep telling myself, I think it's because it'll change how I feel about myself. But no, I think it's the sh it's shame from your mother calling you a faker. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the after effect of being gaslighted and abused that your injuries aren't real. I mean, the f I, I'm, I'm a little surprised that you didn't know you were entitled as, as a surviving spouse to your husband's, to your deceased husband's Social Security benefits. But that's how you think. We think we're not entitled to anything. We deserve nothing. That we're always on our own. Because in essence, when Mike passed, I mean, by and large, you are on your own. But what you can't allow yourself to have happen here is you to take the spot of him taking his family's fucking bullshit. I don't want to admit that I'm, you know, I'm handicapped enough to need that sticker. But what it really might be is I'm still trying to prove something. And I just now thought of that. So that's pretty good. But, you know, these narcs will cut you no slack whatsoever. They don't give a goddamn if you've got a terminal illness. If your back is ready to blow completely out, they don't care about any of it. But the remark about, you know, that I could have been working all those years, that came straight from my brother's mouth. I know it. I mean, I've heard that over and over through the years. And, you know, he kept telling me I needed to go to work. And the reason is because he doesn't want to work. He never did. He's but off your mother. Off topic. I do have another one of these, uh, I call them from the vault, another message I'm going to send in sometime, but 
I didn't want to do them together because that makes them way too long. But uh, I hope I got it all on here this time. I usually tend to leave off something I didn't mean to leave off. Um, if anybody has any ideas, I, I, I really appreciate reading them. And Ollie, if you have anything... Oh, I almost forgot my important question. I would re-record this if I hadn't already done it about five times. Um, before Mike died, I was in touch with our local funeral director. And he's the guy that's done all our family's funerals. And I did this privately so Mike would never know. But I told him what was going on and he was so sorry. He didn't know Mike had the diagnosis. I was putting away money. We were so strapped right then. But I was doing what I could, you know, five, ten, even twenty dollars sometimes in an envelope, you know, hidden somewhere to pay for an eventual funeral. Well, I was able to pay for it. But this guy also cut me a really big break. I mean, he was very generous and good-hearted. And, um, you know, I managed to do it. Well, my daughter, not knowing that, started a GoFundMe, which I wasn't much in favor of. But after I had to live three months with no income until I turned 60, I was glad she'd done it because I was able to live and keep making the house payments. Well, the first name on that list for the GoFundMe was my brother's, but it was his first name. Wesley is his middle name. So I got in touch with her. I said, that's Wes, isn't it? She said, yeah. He, uh, he wanted to give something because uh, he, he and grandmother really think a lot of Mike, but he didn't know how to make it anonymous. Well, I call bullshit on that one. Even I can look at GoFundMe and figure out how to be anonymous. So she said that's why he used his first name. <sighs> yeah, like I said, the narcissist always wants you to know. They always want you to know, Peggy. Always. Because there's always a reason. They can, so they can use it in any way they can. They can manipulate it in their favor. They can manipulate it against you. They can use it to throw it up in your face. They can use it to show what a great person they are. Could be used either way. The attack can come from either way. Either side. You could be gaslighted with it. You can be attacked with it. It doesn't matter. The narcissist always wants you to know. Even if they don't admit it. Which they a lot of times do not. That's just, I get angry when I think about it. So I was wondering, you know, of course, they didn't like Mike. He made my mother unnecessary in my life. I didn't need her anymore. I didn't need her to come get me and the kids to take us somewhere. I didn't need whatever $10 she could throw at me that, you know, I had to make a week's worth of groceries last. I, I'm going to do a audio to one of these days on my ex-husband nobody's going to believe it we'll have to file it under fantasy um, but Mike made him unnecessary and she resented him for that and my brother never really was all that crazy about it. right he resented him because he made them unnecessary that's why she called on behalf of his mother Because he was making them unnecessary. It wasn't about him and his mother. It was about you and her. Do you get it? Because Mike thought he was an asshole. Thought my brother was, which he is. He is. And he was one of the first people that told me, you know, I know you really are crazy about your brother, but I'm sorry, I think he's an asshole. And we just agreed to disagree until he was proven right. But why did my brother do that? I mean, of course, it, it does make it look like I'm the ingrate who's impossible to get along with. Yeah, that's why he did it. Because they always want you to know. Because he can use it any way he wants. He can gaslight you with it. He can attack you with it. He can draw pity off it. He can draw guilt off of it. Look at what I've done for you. Even after all you've done for me and your lowest time, it doesn't matter. He wanted you to know because he can use it against you in any fashion and you don't know 
When the attack it could come at any time. It could come today. It can come a week from now. It could come 10 years from now. At any time, at any from any direction, that's why. That's why the only way you win is to cut these people out of your life permanently. And I can't go around to try to refute anything without looking like a fool. I mean, there's no way we can run up to everybody and say, oh, did you hear my mother or brother said this, that, or the other? That's not the way it really happened. We do look crazy. And they know it. They are gifted at what they're doing. That's why you don't go running up trying to prove your case to anybody. You cut them out. And you see who, and then you see who gives a shit enough about you to come to you and find out what's going on. That's why we go no contact. And most of the time we find out that everybody is caught up in it. That nobody has the courage to stand up. They take the easy way out. So I just wondered, what, why did he do that? Or, or what should I have done about it? I, I just let it go. Give him the money back. You know, just like everybody else on there, I did a little thank you at the bottom of it and was glad. I would, I would, whatever it was, I would figure out a way to give him whatever it is back and say, you know what, I don't want to be beholden to you for anything. Instead of waiting for years and decades for this attack to come, which it will, to let him have that high horse over you, whatever the amount is, wouldn't it be worth just to give him the money so you can just kick him off that fucking high horse? I didn't have to look at his name anymore, but that one really kind of got me. But what this is telling me, too, is that I'm still bothering him. A whole lot more than I thought I was. I mean, he's got me blocked on Facebook. So I thought, you know, he was done with me and he's finished. He's still talking about me. No, he's punishing you. See, now that Mike's out of the picture, okay, and being the lazy sack of shit that he is, and being that you're home just drawing disability and not working, well, if you're not going to work, the least you could do, Peggy, since you're already drawing Social Security is help him take care of your poor, sick mother. You get it? Everything has a reason. Everything has a plan. They want you to know. They always want you to know. And they were, he and my mother started this with that phone call to my brother-in-law, Robbie. So it's still going on, except I'm just not hearing much of it anymore. So, any more insight, advice, I mean, other than just to sit back and do nothing, I don't know what to do. So I really appreciate everything. And sorry this has been so disjointed, and I feel like I'm just rambling, but um, I'm puzzled by all this, and there was so much information I wanted to try to get in. So thank you so much, and bye-bye, and I'll see you on YouTube. All right. Well, first, I'm sorry I had to break this into two parts again. The video got stopped. Look, my advice is, and I, I think I've pretty, I've laid it out pretty clearly already. Okay, you know, I've told you where this is coming from, where he's coming from. They want you to know. Just like Mike's sister and mother wanted him to know the truth, your brother wanted you to know he donated. They want you to know why, so they can use it against you. So they can use it against you that's why my advice to you whatever it was he gave you figure out a way to give it back to him so you can kick him off that high horse he's on and then have nothing if you're already blocked well hey you're already you're already most of the no contact battle is already there okay but understand what your mother did with Mike, that phone call, wasn't about him and his mother. It was about you and him, you and her. It was about you following his lead and him putting all these crazy ideas, which is what you basically confirmed anyway, that you were putting them in his head. And I'm sure she took the same, same route with him on you. 
So <clears throat> thank you so much for your contribution and your audio. I hope this helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to help you keep it succeeding, growing, and expanding, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you wanna see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ali Matthews, this has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.